On the brink of despair in the swamp, this leaf was his last lifeline. He reached for it, pulling gently, then grabbed a branch, exerting light pressure, praying the branch wouldn't snap. He inched his way out of the marsh. It's not the first time a man's had a brush with death. Swept away by a raging river, Bugs made a home atop his head. And he's eaten eggs of unknown birds just before hatching. And he's got a wildling to keep him company. The movie is based on a true story. The man's name is Yossi. He retired from the army in 1980 had it all thanks to his family's wealth, experienced every slice of life. Not keen on schooling, marrying, or fatherhood, he ventured to Bolivia, in South America. There are countless young people with the same ideals. Yossi met Marcus when the captain turned the ship around. A vacationing teacher with the heart of a poet and the soul of a saint. One day Marcus met Kevin, a hiker he used to climb with. Kevin is a photographer and backpacker legend. Trekking across South America, captured countless stunning shots. Three like-minded young men with a lot to say. Shared tales of past jobs and places they'd been. Yossi met a girl, and they clicked instantly. They whipped up a bowl of herbal concoction, drifting into dreams after drinking. <laughs> One day, while Yossi was out and about, a man named Carl, a gold prospector and part-time jungle guide, set his sights on him. He spun tales of jungle mystique, vibrant with the sounds of life-buzzing insects, calling birds, and various animals. Suddenly, Yossi longed to see the hidden world Carl spoke of. He yearned to witness the concealed world as described by Carl. Following that, Yossi told his two buddies about going into the jungle to pan for gold and to see the unseen native indigenous people, but his companions were skeptical, believing Carl's tales were mere fabrications. So, he took them to meet Carl, who claimed maps were useless in the forest. Doubting Carl as a fraud, they were instead captivated by his few words. Carl demands a guiding fee of 50 yuan per person, but if they strike gold, he'll also share a cut with them. Since both friends were keen, Marcus had no choice but to follow. They went shopping for supplies, not bothering much with preparing food no one starves in the jungle. They also bought stimulants, a lighter, a shotgun, and boarded a flight to Apollo. On November 4, 1981, they embarked on foot into the Amazon jungle. Everyone was incredibly excited. Carl said this place was Earth's last frontier, wild and untamed. To him, humanity was but a cancer to the planet. The first night in the jungle, Marcus was attacked, mistaking a killer moth for a mere bat. The next day, the three brothers eagerly anticipated the unknown world ahead. Though cloudless, Carl predicted rain soon. Merely a drizzle by jungle standards. Their clothes needed drying, and food was scarce. Carl reassured them of real food the following day. The three of them couldn't keep up with Carl's physical stamina at all. Especially Marcus, slowing everyone down, eventually getting lost. With no path ahead, Marcus was the first to worry. Kevin suggested following the river, but Marcus preferred waiting for Carl, setting down his pack. Their first dispute arose, with Kevin realizing Marcus wasn't there for enjoyment. At that moment, they encountered the Colorado Chico people in the forest. Finding Carl again, they hoped he would notify them if departing alone in the future. They had stumbled upon a tribe in the Asarimas jungle. Carl was right. The place buzzed with life, children's laughter, and the aroma of cooking, offering a vibrant nightlife. They sampled local delicacies and rested for a day before moving on. In a body of water, Yossi found gold, though merely the size of a rice grain. Continuing on, they were greeted by marvelous sights. Kevin quickly capturing them on camera. Yossi, amidst a beautiful swarm of butterflies, spread his arms to embrace the astonishing scene. As mealtime approached, Carl spotted a monkey. Then they took aim this was the real food of the jungle, as Carl had said. Kevin and Yossi indulged, only Marcus struggled to accept. Carl emphasized keeping the fire alive through the night. For where monkeys roamed, jaguars prowled. Marcus's worsening foot injury slowed the group. Carl bandaged him, with Kevin and Yossi offering help. They planned to share Marcus's load the next day. Yet even that couldn't speed him up. Carl warned they must exit before the rainy season, lest they remain trapped forever. Marcus's condition deteriorated, becoming a burden. We're not friends anymore. Nothing's changed. Even with Yossi's answer, Marcus was having a hard time. Carl proposed either waiting for Marcus's recovery or returning to Asarimas. But having left days ago, return was hardly straightforward. Unwilling to quit, they considered the adventure just beginning. Kevin suggested building a raft to navigate downstream. 
Though Carl disagreed, it seemed their best option, the group agreed, overruling Carl, felling trees for construction, they fashioned ropes from bark. Yossi at work gets bitten by ants and Carl tells him it's fire ants. It's said that the first missionaries tied the indigenous people who didn't believe in Christianity to trees and covered them with fire ants. After that, they converted to Christianity. With preparations complete, they launched the raft into the Amazon under Carl's direction. Admiring the natural scenery, they were thrilled yet soon encountered rapid currents. In the heat of the moment, Carl's commands couldn't keep up with the pace. They argued and had to dock to regroup. After getting organized, Kevin told Yossi that Carl couldn't swim. At that moment, Kevin said, even though Carl is experienced in the jungle, he's afraid of water. After a day's rest, Carl opted for land, leaving due to Marcus's injury and Kevin's complaints. Yossi skillfully used his words to team up Marcus and Carl, even making Marcus feel a sense of gratitude towards him. Split into two groups, Kevin and Yossi continued by raft, while Marcus followed Carl on foot. Carl warned of the rapids, dividing supplies leaving Kevin with the machete and taking the shotgun himself. Kevin's expertise saw them through numerous rapids, anticipating Christmas ahead. In calm waters, they even dreamed of fishing for dinner. As darkness approached, they neared Carl's mentioned canyon. Suddenly, the river water turned turbulent, and there were several rocks ahead. The two constantly changed directions. We never But ultimately, they couldn't conquer nature, their raft slammed into rocks, leaving them in a predicament. Kevin decided to swim to shore, while Yossi cried out loud. At this moment, Yossi didn't want Kevin to leave him behind. Kevin planned to reach the opposite shore and then use vines to rescue Yossi. But as Yossi reached for the machete, he accidentally fell into the river, holding his breath. He was carried downstream by the strong current. After being swept through rapid after rapid, He finally climbed ashore where the water was calm. Looking at the clouds, Yossi realized he was far from Kevin. He climbed steep cliffs, calling out for Kevin amidst the peril. During his calls, Yossi spotted his backpack. Jumping back into the river to retrieve his backpack, he returned to shore to sort through his supplies. His talisman was still there, along with a bottle of Superman pills Carl had advised buying. After taking one, Yossi felt a surge of energy, running excitedly like a superhero. Continuously calling for Kevin, he climbed up slopes, and hours passed like this. Yossi was sure they had gotten separated. What was once a beautiful adventure for four had now become a solo journey. He couldn't rely on Kevin or Carl. His first task was to find food. Seeing fruits on a tree, he climbed up. But just as he reached success, he encountered a snake. Oh! Gathering his courage, Yossi climbed the tree again. He pulled the snake from the tree hollow and picked up a stone to attack it leaving a lasting impression on the small animals of the forest. Yossi had a map and some supplies. He encouraged himself, believing that as long as he kept walking, he would find salvation. Unfortunately, a large, moving lump appeared on his forehead. When there were four of them, not a single person they encountered, but they did come across a jaguar. Fortunately, they retrieved their backpack, and he used flames to scare off the jaguar. He took tweezers, made an incision in the lump on his head and pulled out a worm, marking just the beginning of Yossi's trials danger was everywhere. Seeing two unknown bird eggs, his hunger forced him to swallow them raw. After some time, Yossi found traces of human activity, but they were deserted. He knew his journey was long, but he might make it out with some luck. His feet, just like Marcus's, began to rot away, and Yossi started to weep in pain, recalling how they were prepared to abandon Marcus when his feet were rotting, realizing he was the weakest link. As dawn broke, Yossi continued on his way. He discovered human footprints, thrilling him with hope that Kevin was nearby. But upon finding those eggshells again, Yossi realized he had circled back to his original location. Comparing the footprints, he began to lose his sanity. He remembered his father's wishes for him to attend law school, but he had insisted on adventuring alone. After angering his father, he told his mother he would only be gone for a year. Now lost in the jungle, Yossi's initial resolve had faded. A sudden jungle downpour ensued. Needing to find the river to continue, he sought shelter at the base of a mountain, falling into a deep sleep. In his dream, he returned to Las Vegas, surrounded by lavish food and beautiful women. Just as good fortune seemed imminent, the rain nearly submerged him like a flood. 
After the storm came clear skies. A father and son were walking by the river when they suddenly saw Kevin, who was unconscious. They took Kevin to their village, where he headed to the police station, seeking help to find the lost Yossi. A day later, Yossi was drinking mineral water when suddenly a plane flew high above. Yossi quickly stood up, waving his red raincoat. But how could he be seen through the dense jungle? The plane swept past in the sky. Flying low in this area was nearly impossible, making finding someone almost unfeasible. Yossi shouted in despair, because it was almost impossible for the plane to pass by again. Kevin returned to the town, where the sheriff told him that after nearly three weeks, it was impossible to find anyone alive. The fact that Kevin had survived was already a miracle. Kevin pleaded with the chief, but the chief said they had done all they could. Seeing Kevin's determination, the sheriff recommended someone to Kevin. He was Tico, who knew the river like the back of his hand. But Tico shared the same sentiment. It was impossible for anyone to survive in the jungle for three weeks. No matter how much Kevin pleaded, Tico was unmoved. He requested Tico to sell him a boat, prepared to head upstream alone. It was this gesture that moved Tico, touched by his dedication to his friend. So, Tico agreed to accompany him upstream. At this time, Yossi was not alone. He encountered an indigenous woman. The woman was scared but seemed lonely as well. At night, he began to comfort her, saying planes would fly over and rescue them from the jungle. During the day, they walked together, the indigenous woman closely following him. At night, they huddled together for warmth, but upon waking, the woman was gone. It was all a hallucination. There was no indigenous woman. Yossi looked at the neatly aligned tree trunks as if they were parading soldiers. A smile played on his lips, forgetting he was still in the jungle, perhaps facing the end of his life. Just then, Yossi suddenly sank into the swamp, half submerged. Luckily, the backpack provided some resistance, and the small grasses beside them snapped off as soon as they were pulled. He wanted to reach for his talisman, but staying still was best. Yossi, in despair, fell into a deep sleep again, only to be awakened by a leaf overhead. He gently touched the leaf, pulling it down slowly, then grabbed a branch, gently exerting force, hoping it wouldn't break, inching his way out of the swamp. To keep himself awake, Yossi saw a tree trunk covered in fire ants, finding a way to endure. A single fire ant had once caused him immense pain, but this time, shaking the trunk, he let countless ants fall on him, reviving the weakened Yossi like a shot of adrenaline, pulling him back from his hallucinations. Finally reaching the edge of the Amazon River, he found an open area, laying out logs as a distress signal, hoping a plane would pass by again. Yossi saw a turtle, and though he already lacked the strength to search for food, Food had come to him. He caught it, lying on the ground, weakly telling the turtle it would survive. Believing he was soon to leave this world, he released the turtle, looking at the sparkling stars with tears in his eyes. Closing his eyes, arms spread, he thought dying here might be a beautiful thing. This was the 19th day since Yossi went missing, with Kevin and Tico having searched for days. They had to leave immediately due to the rising Amazon River. As brothers, Kevin had done all he could. Perhaps Yossi was already dead. They missed the distress signal and returned by boat. At that moment, Yossi, lying beneath a stone, woke up. He saw Kevin. Sure this time it was not a hallucination, but he had no strength left. Unable to shout. As Kevin slowly moved away, Yossi stood up slowly, his last hope. Yes, Yossi knelt on the ground, miraculously rescued. Tico couldn't believe Yossi had survived alone in the jungle for over three weeks, lying on the boat. Yossi finally smiled joyfully. The small boat sailed on the beautiful Amazon River, back in Tico's town just before high water. People couldn't believe Yossi was still alive. Yossi drank a cup of water, with the elders praying for him. This is a true story. Yossi and Kevin made it back to La Paz, but Carl and Marcus were nowhere to be found. Kevin spent weeks searching to no avail. They never appeared again. It was later discovered that Carl had guided other tourists before he was wanted by the government, and that there was no such thing as the lost tribe of Indians. To this day, no one knows why he chose Yossi or why he led them into the jungle. In the end, Kevin continued his photography and adventures, recording everything in the distant world, eventually settling in Israel. He married a loving wife and had two sons. Ten years later, Yossi returned to the Amazon River that nearly claimed his life settling there and co-founding the Char Alan Eco Lodge with the Utu tribe. He still harbored a passion for adventure, continuing to explore the earth.